to work with someone effectively, it's important to get closer to understanding their model of the world. And in today's episode, I'm going to help you learn how to respect your clients of the world so you can coach them with more power. Hey, yeah, I'm Amanda, and welcome to the Best Damn Coach Podcast, where I will teach you how to coach yourself, how to coach your clients, and how to run your coaching business. The number one goal of this show, though, is to help you be the best damn coach you can be so your clients go out and tell the world about you. So let's do the damn thing. If you are coaching, you are also in the business of selling, no matter which way you slice it. When you are offering your services to the world, you are also selling your services. And I know this is an area that many of my clients and people I've talked to over the years struggle with. So that's why I've created a free download, a free sales script that I've used to close millions of dollars in clients over the years. So if you struggle with not wanting to feel salesy, it just kind of feels icky, When you get to the place in the call where you're going to share your pricing, you kind of freeze up or maybe you just like over talk and you ramble and say all these things because you're just feeling all of this nervous energy, then head on over to amanda-walker.com forward slash sales script. And I will walk you through the exact step-by-step formula that helps me land my dream clients and feel really amazing about selling because my belief is that coaching is selling and selling is coaching actually. And I'm going to teach you how to do this in a way that feels very connected for you. That feels like you're serving your clients and feels in integrity for the both of you. So when you grab that free download again at amanda-walker.com forward slash sales script, I'm going to give you a step-by-step script to have one successful sales call after another. Simple tips to make your sales calls less about sales and more about serving your people. And lastly, how to prepare for a sales call so you feel very uber confident going into it. And do me a favor, once you use this script and feel really good and you close that client, you just send me an email and tell me how awesome it was for you. Again, you can download it for free now at amanda-walker.com forward slash sales script. So diving into this week's episode, we're going to talk about a really powerful learning that definitely changed the way I see the world and also changed the way I viewed my clients. And we're specifically going to be talking about how to respect your client's model of the world. Well, let's clarify just the definition of model of the world so we all have a working collaboration together, working definition. And the model of the world is simply a client's belief systems, their conditioning, their experience, their memories, their histories, their values, beliefs, even their senses. And basically, they've taken that in through their life. They've filtered it inside somehow. And then what they're doing is looking at the world through all of those belief systems and conditioning. All of that gives us our unique viewpoints, our perspectives, our responses, and our own ideas. And everyone has this. You have your own model of the world and every single client you have has their own model of the world. This is what makes us unique. This is literally the defining characteristic or the defining reason that we all are unique birds in this world. The struggle with coaching is that your model of the world is not your client's model of the world. So the moment you begin working with a client, you are having to sense their model of the world and use physiology, use verbal cues, ask questions to begin to get a sense for their model of the world. Because If you don't, there could be a break in rapport, which I'm going to talk about, which makes coaching challenging for you and for them specifically. So some coaches, and this might be you, and you can reject it if it's not true for you, allow their ego to really drive the coaching. And so they have this very strong approach that their model is the right way for the client. Whether it's conscious or unconscious, and they just don't know what they don't know, They're in a mission to help the client fall in line with the coach's model of the world. And they attempt to convince their clients that basically their model should be the right way for them. 
This is where we struggle when it comes to coaching. In order to work with someone effectively, we need to get closer to their model of the world. That does not mean that we have to adopt it as our own, but effective coaches fall in line with their client's model of the world when they're coaching them so that we can help them create success. An important part of that is if we do a really fantastic job, we deepen the rapport, right? That unconscious like similarity that we have or conscious similarity we have with a client, it helps us to help them to get to the next level. And so when this is not happening in a client relationship, then you kind of lose the client. They're like 15 steps behind or they've just lost you altogether. So I'll give a great example of this. I was at the car dealership getting a vehicle serviced and the service engineer, whatever he's called specifically, was telling me, you know, there's something wrong with the car. And he starts to break out into like the language about the this and the, the this. And I just looked at him with a blank stare and he's like, does that make sense? And I said, you know what? Absolutely not. I have no idea what you're talking about because I don't have the same memories or senses or filters because he's gone through this education around car. I am not there with him. And so it was ineffective communication because he wasn't using languaging that met me where I was at. He could have said, well, when you start the car, you know, if it doesn't start, that's because there's a piece that needs repaired. And right now that piece is not, you know, working for you. So we need to replace that part. And then I would have said, oh yeah. Instead he went right into the language. I don't even know what it is. And that's where we lose our clients. Or similarly, if you're a coach coaching on health, for instance, which is, this is where I see a lot of health coaching because I spent so much time in that space go wrong. Someone hires a, let's say macro coach because they heard that tracking macros is really effective. And so the macro coach gives them their designation. Here's the carbs, fat, protein you should take in. Good luck. When their client doesn't even know what a carb, fat, protein is, and therefore has never been in a place to actually understand how to build a balance plate or what protein is or what sources of protein are. This is why it's so important to understand what the client is bringing to the table and to respect their model of the world. Their model of the world will grow through your coaching because that's what it's intended to be, right? So if you feel that when you start, you're like, whoa, our models are very different. A, if it's a red flag in the beginning that the models feel too far apart and you don't feel like that's your ideal client to support, then maybe you have a colleague that you can refer them out to. And I would encourage you to be open-minded just to learn more about their belief systems and their values to discover whether or not that's true. So I say all this with the assumption that you've already vetted out the red flags. This is your ideal client. And you just want to deepen the transformation that you can provide. And that is respecting their model of the world is a really important component of that. So let's talk about how do we respect a client's model of the world when maybe we see that they just don't know what they don't know and it's kind of holding them back or if it's very different from our model of the world. So how do we respect? Step number one is we learn to meet them where they are, which I already alluded to. So if you want to communicate with them, you have to meet them, right? I mean, this is really high level, but this is our core struggle in our culture. We are not a culture who seeks to meet each other and respect each other's model. We have created a very dichotomous way of thinking, like think about the world around you. You're either left or right. You're either all in or you're out. You're either, let's say, Democrat or Republican. You're either COVID is real and threatening or it's a sham. Like there's nothing in between, right? And I'm just taking these very buzz topics recently for us to just understand. And it's also smaller, right? You're either a friend with someone or you're not. You're either all in on your business or you're not. You're either all in with kids during the summer or you're all in on your business. So then what happens is when somebody else is on the opposite side of the equation from your perspective, we don't seek to meet them and understand them and ask questions. Instead, there is a desire to convince, to say, no, no, my side, come to my side. 
And in coaching, that's not going to serve you or the client. And so the goal here is to seek to understand their model so that you can meet them more deliberately with where they're at. Because when you line up, when you line up with them, you're able to just chunk it down, right? So chunking down means just taking it into smaller baby steps. If you're trying to teach something at level eight and they're still at level one, we're not meeting them where they're at. And this is a, a common struggle with an inability to help clients foster results is coaches come into a coaching session and they're already thinking about what they're going to be teaching. Pause. The first thing we want to do is understand their client's model of the world in that session. So they may have had like a really crappy experience. They might be really struggling. And if you're already ready to teach the next thing and they're still on the last thing, then we're going to lose them and you're going to break rapport. And rapport is really required for you to be effective. You're going to have to take steps back and reestablish rapport and figure out like, hey, I missed something. Let's come back to this. It doesn't feel congruent for me and understand more deeply. When people feel that their map, right? So this is like their map is their vision of the model. So it's their own personal map. When they feel like somebody's coming after them, right? And they feel like, whoa, 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 you're questioning my map. Then the natural instinct is to like resist, right? If you think about something that you believe strongly in, and when somebody comes at you and questions it, what do you do? You fire back. Well, you do one of two things. Either you fire back and you want to be like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I'm right. Or you withdraw, right? And either way, this is breaking rapport with a client. And if you're not keen to this communication, there are many coaches that go on about coaching and they've just broken rapport and never gone back to reestablish it because they just haven't been paying attention, right? They haven't been an observer of their client. This could mean that they shut you out or you're kind of threatening them. And at that point, like their goal then is to absolutely not change their mind. They're just resisting it. And they're like, nope, you questioned me. You attacked my viewpoints. I'm out. There's no way that I can shift, which of course, obviously is not effective communication, nor is it going to help your client get the results. Another way we respect our client's model of the world is if we encounter this resistance that I spoke of. So if we notice that they're not connecting with us, maybe their body language is telling us like, mm, something's off. We want to pay more attention to them. We want to not be in our heads and be thinking about the next thing. We just simply want to pause and ask, hey, I notice, you know, that your body language changed or, you know, did I miss something? How are you doing here? Can you tell me about what you're thinking right now, how you're feeling? Like give them an opportunity to share what's happening so that you can come back and just kind of dig in and find out what's transpired. You may not know what you don't know sometimes. Definitely has happened to me in coaching for sure. Another way that we can respect our client's model of the world or things to think about when re working to respect their model of the world, this is honestly a discussion as a whole inside of our culture is are you coming in with the need to be right and like win the discussion? Like I'm going to show my client that this way is going to be the thing that works for them. And this is going to be the thing that changes everything. And I want to be right, right, right. I've seen this in one of the certification programs. There's a framework that we use to guide clients. And sometimes I see coaches forcing this framework. It has to work. It has to work. And sometimes a client isn't even in a place that they believe that their thinking is driving the shit for them, right? And this is something I talk a lot about. And this framework shows how our thoughts create our results. Sometimes clients are like having a hard time even understanding that their thoughts are so powerful for them. In that case, we don't want to force, you know, a hammer on a spot where we need to use a wrench, right? We have to be flexible and use various tools with our clients so that we can help better understand their model of the world and provide them opportunities to explore what's the possibility. Could it be? Imagine if, right? And start to help them see that there are other ways of thinking. This is how we are. If we're hanging out with friends and we're having a discussion, right? That typically when, again, our map fills questioned, we go on the defense and there is, I'm right. Which brings me back to this whole idea of right, deeply questioning right. This is so interesting to me because there are topics, hot topics, which I've already mentioned a few, where we just really, really believe that our way is the right way. And it is for you. And that is beautiful. When you are so anchored in belief, which we all have beliefs that we are so highly anchored in, it is the right way. 
The problem with that is it doesn't mean it's the right way for everybody else. The right way for me to grow my business is through a podcast. However, I'm not going to go out and tell everybody else that it's the right way for them to grow their business. And in fact, it's a very wrong way for many people. If they don't enjoy it, they don't like the organization, they're not great at consistency, it could be a very not successful thing for them. And so no matter what, the convincer we try to offer in this world that there is a right way is not existent. This really helps me have more empathy with clients, but it helps me be a better mom. It helps me be a better person. And honestly, it stopped allowing people to trigger the heck out of me because I could just step back and go, okay, that's the right way for them. It's not for me. The way their marriage is, not for me, but it's totally the right way with them. The way they parent, I just stopped being so judgmental around people because I had this major epiphany that respecting another person's model is understanding that they're doing life the right way. If it's not for them, if it's not a problem for them, it's not my business to intersect. If somebody hires me as a coach and they say, this is a problem, I need support, then that's where we begin to explore the model and open it up and help them see that there are things they may not know and education that we can provide and frameworks and tools to explore and open up the model that will very much serve them. So this is an important part as a coach, a really important part, because you have to find that sweet spot of being aligned to your values and what you're willing to be flexible on and what you're not. If there are things you might be open to any aspects. And sometimes there might be a part of your map, a part of your model that you're just not willing to wager on. And that's okay. It's your business. You get to decide, but you also should do your homework on understanding if something's like triggering you inside, why is that? And is there a possibility to coach yourself around that particular model and believing it is the right way and the only way, because that's a very slippery slope in not being an effective coach from my perspective. I mean, in closing around this is it does not mean you give up your model and adopt somebody else's as true. It just means that ultimately you learn to respect it and learn about it. And when you learn about their model, then you're able to actually leverage it and use it to your advantage and use examples. For example, if I'm working with a client who is very much an important model of the world for them is some form of organized religion. It is not up to me to change it, right? That's their model and it's right for them. So then what I can do though is bring in examples and use that model to meet them where they're at. Like if I were talking about consistency, I might say, okay, well, do you have consistency in prayer? Cool. Tell me how you get that. How do you get consistency in prayer? And they'll tell me. And then I might say, awesome. So you know you can be consistent in prayer. Can we just map that across? Could we look at how we could take that same consistency and apply it towards business? Can we take the parts of that that help you get consistent and see what it could be like to explore over here to get consistent in posting on social media or getting consistent in some other aspect? So it's learning to work within it. And that is so freaking amazing as a coach. When you just start to see that and you start to even, I mean, listening to this episode, you may not have the language of respecting somebody else's model of the world. And you might feel there has been opportunities in coaching where you can kind of see, oh, they're not with me yet. They're still kind of hanging back or they're way ahead and I've missed something. And this is the opportunity for you as a coach to come in and really leverage their model of the world to bring them tremendous success. So I hope this conversation helps you better serve your client to be the best damn coach you can be for your people. And as always, if you have questions about this topic, feel free to send us an email at support at amanda-walker.com or send me a message over on Instagram, which is where I hang out most at a walk my way. So again, thanks for joining me. Every week, I put my heart and soul into this podcast to bring you value and to help you grow as a person and as a coach. And one of the ways, it's very simple ways you can return that favor is by leaving us a review. So if you haven't left us a review, head on over to Apple or Spotify, leave us a review, let us know how we're doing, let us know what content you love and which content pieces are really speaking to you now. 